Hi. In this a little longer episode, I'm going to look at printing in QGIS. Start by creating a new print composer and give it a name if you like. This will open up a layout page with a work area in the center. Make sure you have the composition panel active and select it. In the panel, you can change the paper presets to a format you'd like. If you want to create multiple pages, it's easy to add more. You can also change the orientation of your pages. If you'd like, you can also change the background color of the page. Next, add a map by selecting the tool and draw a rectangle with the mouse on the page. You can resize this later. The Select or Move Item tool lets you make different items active and move them around on the page. The Move Item Content will let you pan the map inside the frame without moving the map item on the page. Zoom will zoom in the layout and not in the map. The Pan tool will consequently pan the layout and not the map. To view the layout at full extent, you can press this tool button. All items has item properties. For the map item, you can set how it is rendered in the preview. This will not affect the finished map, so here you can choose something that is quicker to draw. Sometimes it's necessary to update the preview, and for that you can press this button. When you pan and zoom the map in QGIS, it doesn't automatically translate to the composer. To update, it doesn't help to update the preview. You need to set the extent to the same as the map canvas with this button. If you want to map in a certain scale, you can set that as well. If you want grids, you can add as many grids of different coordinate systems as you'd like. You can set a lot of different properties for the grids. So just experiment with it until you find something you like. For this map, I'll turn the grids off. All items have some properties in common. One of those are the frame. To add a label to your page, you select the tool and draw a rectangle where you want your text to be placed. You can then edit the properties of the label item so that you get the desired effect. As with the map, you could use a frame for the label item, but sometimes the frame is just in the way. You add a legend or a symbol description the same way as any other item. As a default, all map symbols are included in the le legend. First, you need to deselect the auto update function. Then you can edit the list of items. And I'm just gonna remove all and add just the roads. There's a nice feature to filter the items so that only visible items is portrayed. Items can be individually edited as you like. You can display the legend items in more than one column. And for long lists, you can select to split layers. As before, you can select a frame for the item or not. A scale is often useful and you can control this in a lot of ways in the properties. It can be a numeric or graphic scale, and I usually go for the minimalistic types. 
You can edit the units and segments of the scale, as well as the font and style of the lines. It's possible to add simple geometric shapes, which can be useful for frames of different kinds. Arrows are used to point to different things in the layout, not as north arrows. If you want a north arrow, you add an image instead. Images can be any supported raster format, but also built-in and customizable SVG vector symbols. Here you can select a north arrow and adjust it to the image box. If you want your north arrow to follow the map rotation, you can sync it to a map item. Finally, to print your map, you click the print button. You can also export the page as a raster image in a lot of formats and as SVG in vector format. SVG export can be a bit buggy, but it usually works okay. I'm gonna export to PDF. Just choose a file name and hit save. And there's my finished map. See you next time.